Welcome to Revna Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang, and this is episode 17, Do Not Fear, Celebrate. This is a big, rather big topic for me, because it is the antithesis of what I am. <laughs> so, um, I, I keep hearing so many different prophets, uh, on so many different videos, um, mentioning to do not fear or do not get into anxiety or do not get into worry or distress or despair and that we are supposed to give praise and worship and thanksgiving even in the times of our troubles and uh to just celebrate during this time the biggest one that i know of is cat care who i watch um pretty much as often as I can when I see her on Elijah streams, I don't really see too many of her own personal videos on YouTube and the like, and maybe maybe because I forgot to subscribe. Um, but any time that I see her on Elijah streams, I listen to her and what she has to say. I see other videos. Um, I don't know what they're called, just copied mock videos of, you know, different, uh, different prophets or different um, pastors when she goes to speak with them. And other people take their videos, copy it, and post it on YouTube, you know, just whether it's a means to try and get money or their fake accounts or something like that. Seems to be the only time that I find her, oddly. Um, but uh, she often says to celebrate during this time, to eat cake, if you will. Eat cake, celebrate, because heaven is rejoicing for everything that is going down. Um, all the saints above are watching what is happening, and they have been waiting for this time and we are in the midst of it and God put us you and I everyone else on this planet at this specific point in time for this particular revival and for some reason we are part of it um, at least uh, those of us who are faith are being brought into this uh, you know and uh, are believing what is going to be going down are paving the way and uh, creating the paths that are set in motion for what is about to happen during this last season harvest this billion soul harvest and there's a lot of pruning there's a lot of emptiness there's a lot of stretching there's a lot of just constant being beaten over the head by the enemy a lot of attacks a thousand front attack a lot of growth that is going on in this season uh, a lot of testing trials and tribulations that the Lord uh, sorry I have an itch I just shaved today so <laughs> I got some hairs loose hairs on me uh, or I shouldn't say shaved I still have I trimmed the beard so I got some loose hairs that were itching my nose so you'll probably see me do that a lot sorry but that Jesus had uh, called us into to grow in him and we're not supposed to be grumbling within these tests and the stretching and the pruning and the leveling up, if you will. We're supposed to be rejoicing and celebrating in what he has done for us and what he's doing to us so that we will become stronger in him and more bound to him and more just we, we find security within all he is doing during this time, especially in the time of this great shaking that's going to be happening soon. <clears throat> and for me as i'm sure it is for with many of you um especially those of you who are watching this video <laughs> otherwise you probably wouldn't be here uh you're in the same boat i am that the struggles are most definitely real and <clears throat> it's just it has been nothing from me except grumbling and complaining i do pray in the stuff i do declare i do decree i try and do what the lord is calling me to do but at the same time the most exponentially hardest thing for me to do is to celebrate and have joy and have happiness and to eat cake if you will during this time to know what is coming down the chute um, past three years have been uh, anything but that and i'm sure for many of you it has been the same and for those of you who think that you are the only one suffering or uh, have complete loss or seeing the world just come crashing or crumbling down around you you've not been talking to enough people i don't think because it's pretty much almost everyone on a mass scale especially those who are praying in intercession during this time and are trying to stop the onslaught that was coming and to partake with god in his calling for us to declare and decree to fight back against the enemy 
um, this global elite world system, this Luciferian uh, group that, as small as they are, is causing just damage across the planet is just wreaking havoc and has an ultimate plan to push in tribulation earlier than expected because they want it to happen now but the time is not now it's still a ways off we still have the last harvest to do there's still a, a even biblically there's there's so much more that needs to come before the end times the actual end and the end of time is what i should say Again, as Manuel Johnson said, God told him that we are in the end times, but it's not the end of time. There's there's still a lot of stuff to do. We probably have a good century, if not more, to go. There's a lot of things that are going to need to be happening and to even be fulfilled scripturally before any of this goes down. But Satan always is trying to move the clock ahead and to push it forward and to bring in his agenda and to bring in his destruction because the faster he can do it, even though he knows his time is up, um, the more destruction he will bring upon God's chosen people, and maybe even for him, the more souls lost. Uh, but I think God is also using that during this time to flip the script and bring in more people into his fold, even though the times are going to be getting darker for a short time until the flip actually happens. So now that we see where we are at in this episode and what to do about it, obviously celebrate, but... Um, explaining how to get there. I think for a lot of us that are just looking at that answer and going, no. Um, I'm going to play, if you will, devil's advocate because I've been there for the past three years. And I've been feeling internally a slight change into the better. It happened more or less around Thanksgiving. Um, and has been slowly ushering into me, especially after yesterday, December 1st, where it snowed here in Boise, Idaho. It was a nice covering of snow, which um, was nice to see actually before Christmas. Um, the last year or so, it always came after Christmas. And it, it was, to me, even a sign that things are going to start looking up. I know a lot of you hate snow, but I'm from Wisconsin. You need to have snow during Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas in Hawaii, you're just weird. <laughs> so um, for me, that was kind of a, a sign from the Lord saying that things are going to start looking up. And I'm going to pour me. Again, the kosher wine. I've graduated from grape juice. Actually, I don't care. I don't care if it's grape juice or wine. Then I got me the wafers. So for those of you who wish to do communion, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together with you and with all of us watching. I know the views have been starting to grow a little bit more. Hopefully I'm helping to turn a few heads. Um, if anything, just to pull them out of the pit of despair and questions and confusion that they may have, as well as I had during this walk, and to bring it in closer to what you're trying to show for us and guide us into during this last harvest season, especially, <laughs> wow, especially this episode of telling us to do not fear and to celebrate. And that that is just, that seems almost an impossibility for some of us especially through some of the trials and tribulations and walks that we have been through. And we're just looking at some of these people who are telling us to do this and going, you're nuts. <laughs> you're insane. How do we even do this? And hopefully the coverage that I will have today, even in the part of playing the devil's advocate, can come about to bring light and a new insight into this and why we should be doing it, as well as how we should be doing it so we can accomplish such measures and turn to you even stronger, more emboldened and ready to walk into this battle, swords drawn and ready to take on the beast in this final, well, not the final, because there's still one more to come in the tribulation, but during this last showdown of which we will never see these particular enemies of global elites again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <clears throat> I'll take this. Oh, almost forgot I broke it and the second one fell out.
I'll just leave it there. So I'm just going to put it back, but and wash it down with some of the coffee. So. Right. Eat cake. This is the phrase I've heard pretty much since November of 2020. I explained this in a few episodes, and I think even the previous episode, where I was very distraught after 2020, and you see just the literal, just 90 degree incline on Biden, and just went, it's so blatantly, obviously, in your face, right there, fraud. Um <clears throat> And it just, even to this day, it seems certain things are coming out now where the proof is starting to be shown that, oh, look at that, it was fraud. A lot of states are also coming out with their own uh, judicial laws saying, this is not happening ever again. We are, You need a voter ID. You need to come in. You know, you're not going to get perpetual onslaught of, you know, registered ballots being mailed to you. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, many states, including my own state of Wisconsin, which was the last drop in the bucket for getting everything tied in in a nice, neat little package on how to do actual voting that day, legal voting. And they just passed it, I think, this, this past week. So good job. Well done, Wisconsin. You finally got something right for once, apart from cheese. But during 2020, and you saw the fraud, and uh, the next day I was just like, okay. Things are going to get a lot worse from here, aren't they, Lord? And I was going online, just flipping through, flipping through. It shows you how old I am, like I'm sitting there with a remote flipping through the TV stations, going through YouTube clips, and uh, just seeing um, <clears throat> what answers I could find, you know, even from a Christian perspective. And that's when I came to Flashpoint and saw them talking to Cat Care. I'm sorry, it wasn't, it wasn't Cat Care, it was Hank Kuhneman. And I believe Nathan French and Kent Christmas was on there too, if I'm not mistaken. Someone else. Um, I started getting into them, and from Flashpoint, I, I found Elijah's streams. And that's where I saw Kat Kerr in one of her episodes. And it was more or less, I think, within that week, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Some of you want to check, go for it. But I think it was within that week or two that I saw Kat Kerr. And she was just like, celebrate, and eat cake. The Lord's going to be doing something now. And I'm just like, the first thing that went through my mind, and still to this day, a lot of times when I'm feeling down is, you are out of your damn mind. I'm like, there's, I'm sorry, uh, what? There's no way I'm going to celebrate this. There's no way I'm going to enjoy any of this. Whatever it is that's going down, whatever the Lord has planned, this is horrifically awful, and I, I can't enjoy one second of it. And through my walk since then, within these past three years, it has been just a roller coaster of emotion. And it, for the most part, those emotions were all just anger and grumbling and complaining and just literally hating every single second of my life since then. I've, I've not enjoyed literally anything since then. I, I just, I haven't been happy. All joy has been completely removed from my life, all happiness. And for a lot of us in the Christian community who understand what is going on and know the attacks that are coming and have been beating us down during our pioneer season, during this cave dwelling season, this this uh, path setting season that we are trying to form for everyone else when it all hits the fan and they come running in, um, <clears throat> and, I, and they understand this, they get this part, and I think a lot of other Christians and other people who live worldly do not understand. And I, I need to drive the point home because it's it's something that I, I think is very skewed. And I think very, um, very misleading to a lot of people, a lot of other Christians who are just waking up to this, and even those within the world who don't believe what is going on, um, as that that we're part of some sort of weird MAGA movement that 
this, our depression, our, our grumbling, our just the walk that we're going into and the thing that we're trying to strive for, the thing the Lord is leading us into, is somehow all about Donald Trump. And it's not. It is absolutely not about that. God can use people for what he is trying to achieve, but you don't put that person up on a pedestal and make him God, all right? None of us here, I can assure you, think that Trump is in place of Jesus, that he's somehow some sort of deity or God or person that we're trying to worship, that he is the end all to everything that we need answered. This is not the situation. It never was the situation. And how you got to that situation or thinking that it was that is just complete ludicrous. None of us here believe that. And the media is straight up, flat out lying to you on that. We don't hold Trump up as a God. He is not our answer to everything. He is not our Lord and Savior. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. But if God can use the jawbone of an ass, he can use Trump, <laughs> okay? It's, it just boggles my mind how many people think that just because we saw what happened, we saw the fraud that took place, we know who is the, the rightful president right now, that somehow we're making him some sort of Lord and Savior. And we're not. We're waiting for God to turn the tables and bring justice to what has happened. Not just his seat, all the seats that were taken. Because rest assured, there was a lot of seats taken, not just Trump's. Many, many people had their seats stolen from them. Not just here, but across the world. There is a globalist, Luciferian, deep state, deep state agenda to take over this world, pretty much to annihilate it or enslave us so they can keep everything for themselves because they're satanic. And I don't like satanic. And I would rather have the person who's not satanic in the seat of the presidency, but he's not there because it was taken from him by a fake and dead president. And I'm not saying that as a joke because he can't move or because he can't get off a stage or he's shaking hands with nobody when he's talking. It's because Biden is literally dead. That's not Biden. That is not President Joe Biden. That is an actor in his place. And it is so blatantly obvious and it blows my mind how people cannot see this. They, they just, they have the veil so covering their face right now that even if you just show them straight up the difference between the actual Joe Biden and the president that is in office right now, that it, it's just, I don't see how, how you can't see it. They're two different people. In fact, you know what? During this editing, I'll just put it up right now. I'll show you Joe Biden, the actual Joe Biden, on the left in the picture, and on the right is the president, the actor, the Biden, as many of the prophets call him, on the right. Take a look right here. Now, if you looked at both those pictures and went, I don't see any difference between them. You either need glasses or you just I, completely sold out to the narrative. Those are two different people. And there, there was, for a very short time, something in the media where they were trying to cover this because some people were questioning it. It's like, well, that's not Joe Biden. And the media came out for a while saying, well, after Joe Biden had his plastic surgery, I don't remember this too. And I'm like, what, 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 what? When did, no, he never had plastic surgery. This was never on record. Nowhere in the history did it say he had plastic surgery ever. You guys just started to bring it out just to say that he had it. And second, even if he did have it, even if just by some far off chance that he had plastic surgery and nobody covered it ever until we started questioning that he looked different, that's not plastic surgery. If you look at the two, that's, that's facial reconstruction. That, that is like he had to have been in some sort of car wreck or like, I mean, went into like just deep, deep, like hardcore facial reconstruction to the point that 
like nobody reported on it. Nobody went, hey, where's Joe Biden? Hey, what happened to him? Oh, hey, look, he's got a bandage on his face. He's recuperating. He's recuperating from something. It's like nobody reported on it. No, no, no. It's just one day, Joe Biden. Next day, not Joe Biden. And as far as I remember, I think it literally was that. Like one day, Joe Biden. Next day, completely different looking person. That's some fast facial reconstruction healing, if you ask me. Um, so there's that. There's there, that not only was it stolen, it was stolen by the person who's not even really the, the legit person that stole it. So there's there's uh, and <clears throat> I think we're going to be finding out, too, that there is uh, actually not just a lot of seats stolen, but a lot of actors in the places of the supposed people that stole the seats. Like it's not just Joe Biden. There's a lot of people who are acting all of this out this one giant facade to keep the train going into this global elite last luciferian agenda to completely bring us to our knees and bring america to our knees bring the world to its knees and that script is going to be flipped by god this is why people like cat care say we need to celebrate. We need to eat cake because even though the globalist agenda are trying to pull this off right now, and they're trying to push in this this last this last action to take us all down, God is going to use it to usher in His last harvest season. This is what some people refer to as the Kingdom Age. Now, there is a difference between the Kingdom Age, sorry, it's my the Kingdom Age, and the millennial reign two different things and some people think that somehow these two things mutually exclusive from one another can only be an either or and scenario but that's not it there's the kingdom age which ushers in a time period which god is showing us exactly what he is trying to bring in what uh i, I shouldn't really say garden of eden conditions were but what he wants us to do with the earth, with creation, with making movies, with making clothes, with ways of travel, uh, ways of giving, ways of, uh, you know, eating, uh, just, just everything that we're supposed to be using with our hands uh, to glorify and worship and give to God with music sorry even that too yeah just the, the whole seven pillars of society with the school system with the public uh i was gonna say public education i just said school system sorry with the government um every pillar of society is supposed to be ushering in this way that god wanted it to be on earth as it is in heaven now the kingdom age is, is setting that up and giving us just a taste of what it's supposed to be and during that time <laughs> those of us who stayed strong during this attempt to usher in the tribulation early and we've set the path for what is supposed to be bringing in the kingdom age we stayed strong too we've had faith in the lord and we declared and decreed and we fought alongside lord he will bless those who do that so that they can go and in turn help increase this um this kingdom age uh, as kingdom financiers um, or those who just can help teach and can help bring in, usher in this billion soul harvest that is going to be coming because everyone's going to want a piece of the pie once they see that it is. When the last soul is saved, the last person who wants to come to Jesus, supposedly that is when the rapture happens. And it happens because everyone who didn't want to be saved or don't still doesn't believe in jesus or they are luciferian still because it's not going to be a cakewalk the entire time they're still going to be evil in the world so they're going to be people that try and you know take over try and do evil things but they're going to be underfoot they're they're not going they're not going to be on top but we're going to be the head and not and not the tail um during this time but even then there's there's going to be some evil still in the world there's going to be bad people there's people that are just not going to wake up to it once we get raptured that is when the seven-year tribulation kicks in for those people of which there'll still be many, I'm sure. Um, and that last seven years is God removing his hand, removing everything, removing us, removing everything Christian from the planet and saying, okay, you want a world without me? I'm going to give you a world without me. That is what the tribulation is, is God's last wake-up call for those who do not 
want to believe in God, who do not want to become part of his family. It, because of his love, he wants to give them one last shot. And he's like, you want to live without me? I'm going to show you what a world is like without me. And you are going to be under the reign of Lucifer himself. Have at it. And if that's not a wake-up call for anyone else during those last seven years, I don't know what is. But he's going to give them the opportunity to live in reality that particular lifestyle completely under the helm of a uh, satanic agenda under underneath lucifer this is where you get the tribulation saints this is where the two witnesses come in which i personally believe is enoch and elisha because those two were taken up they they haven't died yet they were removed and taken out of death and set, I think, for an appointed time to come down as a two witnesses. And if you look throughout the Bible, whenever uh, the Lord comes, like say uh, when he went to Lot uh, or when he went to Abraham to get Lot out and stuff like that. And Abraham was pleading with God. He had, he had two people with him. A lot of people say, oh, it's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I don't think so. I think that was Jesus. And it was the two witnesses with him. They go throughout time. You always see the Lord, and he's usually accompanied by two witnesses, two men, two, two angels, if you will. And I, I believe that he is using Enoch and Elijah throughout time to become the two witnesses for the end times. Now, a lot of people think that it's Elijah and Moses. I don't really think that, because it's appointed once for man to die, and then after that, the judgment. And Moses died already. So uh, a lot of people associate Moses because Elijah was there and Moses was there during the, uh, <clears throat> trans the transfiguration on the mount when Jesus took, you know, his inner circle up and he, he saw them. That doesn't exactly mean that it's going to be those two in particular. Um, but it, it, it could be I'm, I'm just my own personal thing. I think it's going to be Enoch and Elijah because they will have to die during that time. And there'll be celebration in the streets from those who killed him. And after three days, they rise up again. So that's just my own personal take on it. But um, from there, the two witnesses go and uh, bring faith to the 144,000. And even in the Bible says, you know what these people are and... Uh, you know, and John was like, no. And he's like, these are 12,000 from each tribe of Israel, which equals 144,000. And from there, that 144,000 goes out and evangelizes the whole world. That would make more sense because I hear a lot of people saying, well, we go through the tribulation. We have to, we have to die and suffer for Christ and we'll go through the tribulation. It's like, so the 144,000 are going to go out and evangelize the whole world. The 12,000 Jews from each tribe are going to go out and evangelize. None of us Christians are going to go out and evangelize, is what you're saying? Now, I, I think they say that because we're not going to be here. We're not going to do any evangelizing because we're already gone. It's the 144,000 that are going to go out and make the tribulation saints. And then after that <clears throat> comes, when Jesus comes down and pretty much divvies up everyone. And after that comes, that comes the thousand year reign where Jesus rules and reigns with us on this planet for a thousand years. Now, supposedly during that time, there's going to be uh, children still being born during that time. Um, you know, there's uh, because after that thousand year reign, the devil is going to be let loose one more time to tempt people. And I think that's going to be for tempting those who were born within the thousand year reign so that they have to make their decision between you know, selfish or satanic, Luciferian, sinful ways, or Jesus. And then after that, then comes the new heaven and the new earth, and it collides as one. So odd as it may seem, I, I think those who are going to be raptured up and those who live during the thousand year reigns may not see the actual heaven that is there right now. Like some of us don't even get to heaven. Some of us remain on the earth, or we get raptured up into the clouds to join Jesus in the marriage supper of the Lamb. It doesn't say heaven. It says we meet him in the clouds and we watch below what is going on during that seven-year tribulation. Then we come back down to earth, live the thousand years, and then we um, have the new heaven and new earth after that. So it means God not only destroys the earth and, and the universe that he created, he wipes out heaven and makes a new heaven as well. And then the two collide together where we're both spiritual and body or glorified body as one. So 
it's always interesting to hear. Um, so for those of us who believe in all of this uh, and believe in the kingdom age, that's separate from the thousand year reign with the tribulation happening and, and the rapture happening in between the two. Um, we're entering into a time period where Satan is trying to push in the tribulation early because he knows his time is short and he wants to get in as much time with his reign as he can and destroy as much of us as possible or have as much of us living underneath his servant, you know, being servants to him. But that's not going to happen. And so during this time, we are being built up. We are having to be ready and prepared for this final push that Satan's going to be doing. So this is a, these are years, this is a time of preparation for many of us who are aware to what is going on, a time of stretching, and a time of being crushed and pressed, and a time of endurance, and a time of trials and tribulations, and having a thousand front attack uh, from Satan at, at all angles, in every which way you can possibly think of. And it hasn't been fun. And for some reason, we're supposed to be eating cake through it all and rejoicing and giving thanks to God. And biblically speaking, this is accurate. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, living it, however, <laughs> is a different subject. And the past three years have been nothing but just complete, utter, unabashed hell for me, as I'm sure it has been for many of you. You have gone through loss, uh, just, I mean, in, in every sense of the word, just complete, utter loss. You have been through devastation. You have been through a crushing and a pressing and a weariness and an exhaustion and a beating down. And it's just like, it's just, it seems relentless. It keeps going and going and going and going and going, and it doesn't stop ever. And it's, it just seems exceedingly hard to have joy to have happiness anyway as far as i'm concerned my joy is gone it's it's been gone for years now i haven't been like happy happy you know like i still make sarcastic jokes and smile and laugh and stuff like that like have you seen, you've, seen, you've seen me do but it's just it's it's not like I, I i have like no happiness at all left it's it is just completely obliterated from my life um and so it does beg the question how do we celebrate? How are we supposed to not have fear and eat cake and be joyous during these times of trouble? And I know many of you can go on and say that, uh, well, it's because of what God is doing. You know, it's just because of what Jesus has done for us already on the cross. And we're supposed to be thankful and celebrate and, you know, look forward to the time that we're with him up in heaven. And it's like, well, if that's all that we're looking for, Lord, take me now, because I, I just... I grow absolutely weary of this world. I, I, I have I have no interest in being here anymore at all. If, if that's the case, if that is the end result, and that is the only end result that there is, is just us in heaven, then if suicide wasn't so damning, I would have been gone years ago. I'm just going to straight up say it. I just it, If I didn't have the fear of thinking that my soul would be lost and away from Jesus because of me committing suicide, I would have committed suicide. I'd, I'd be gone by now. So we know that that's not the case. We know that that it, it it is one of it is the best thing. He came down. He removed sin from us. It is a glorious thing. I don't think I'm trying to belittle or mock what Jesus did for us. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm very thankful for what he did so we could become a part of God's family, so that we can become the bride of Christ, so we could spend eternity with him. But if eternity is all that there is, and the end result is not here, but over there somewhere, then get me the hell out of here, because I don't want to be here anymore. I, I, I want nothing to do with this plane at all. I'd, I'd rather be home. I would so much rather be home right now. I'm sure a lot of you are thinking the same thing. Why are we here? If all that there is is just pain and suffering and just trying to endure till the end, what's the point of it? Is, is there any point at all to it? But the Bible says that God is trying to make, and we even pray it, and not just the Bible, but, well, it, it is in the Bible because it is the Lord's Prayer. So it's, make it on earth as it is in heaven. There's going to be a time where we will have this on earth. Now, whether you believe that that's just the thousand-year reign and not the kingdom age, either way, it's going to happen here. 
And we're supposed to be striving for that. We're, su we're supposed to be ushering that in. We're supposed to be looking forward to that time. It's not just yonder in heaven. It's supposed to be here. God is trying to bring it here. Not only is he trying to bring it here, he's trying to do it twice. He's trying to do it during the thousand year reign. And then he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth where we're like that forever. Never ending. It's always going to be like that. And for some of us who believe in a kingdom age, he's trying to do it thrice. He's trying to give us just a taster of what is supposed to be coming. And as a last end result, to be like, wake these people up. The billion soul harvest is coming. I want all these people to come into the fold. Here is what heaven is supposed to be looking like, all right? We gather in all these people. And then when the last one is finally saved, that's when we get raptured up. And the rest who are remain, God is still going to give them one more chance, which is what the tribulation is. He's like, you want hell on earth? I am literally going to give you hell on earth. Now, will you decide, living underneath this and showing you exactly what Satan wants for you, do you still want to be with me? Do you choose me now? This is where the tribulation saints come in. He's giving us time after time after time after time after time after time after time, after time countless opportunities to turn to him to be with him because god is long suffering he doesn't he doesn't want anyone to perish but for all of us to come into his fold for all of us to become part of his children to for all of us to have eternal life with him here's the thing he's long suffering he's not all suffering if he was all suffering there would be no justice for those where we have suffered for him and there's no retribution, there's no recompense, there's no restoration in anything if he was all suffering, where it's just gonna go on forever like this. At some point, sometime in history, this has to flip. It's gotta flip because he is a God of justice. He is a God of, of righteousness. He is a God of, of absolute truth. And vengeance is his but it's also his in a form of absolute justice and righteousness. And it has to come. It can't just come yonder at the end of time. He wants it to come here on earth as it is in heaven. He's been trying to beat us over the head with this and show us constantly, this is what I want you to have. This is what, this is what I want of this planet. And you're just letting Satan run rampant constantly over this. So, because of our failings as well, not, not just a Luciferian agenda, but I, I also feel because of our failings and because of our prayers, declarations, and decrees for those of us who have been trying to usher this in, God is finally going to make the action himself, and he is going to bring in this kingdom age. He is going to kick off the tribulation. He is going to end the tribulation. He is going to bring in the thousand-year reign, and then he will, in the end, bring heaven and earth, new heaven and new earth together as one. It's all about him. So how do we celebrate again during this time, during the struggle which, late, which Satan is trying to just constantly beat us down into submission and make sure that none of us have any faith whatsoever to keep declaring, keep decreeing, keep praying, keep looking forward to this kingdom age? How do we eat cake? Well, if it can't be through our strength, and it can't be through our joy, and it can't be through our happiness, because I have none left. I got, I got no strength. I got no happiness. I got no joy. It's, it's gone. It is completely eviscerated from my life. Then the only other strength and happiness and joy that I can think of is through God. And we need to ask God for his strength, for his provision, for his happiness, and for his joy and for his glory to fill us, to give us the strength to give us joy, to give us happiness, to ask him to fill us up with his indwelling during this time so we can overcome these trials and temptations that are literally beating us down to the ground. Because it's not through our strength, lest any man should boast. It is through God's. We need to look to him during this time. And this is something that I've had tons of trouble with over the last few years. And the only way that I could possibly get through it, again, as I'm saying, as I'm playing devil's advocate during this time, is for me to go into my mind and play devil's advocate with someone else. And a lot of times when I'm lying in bed, I'd, I'd go through conversations. 
I go through, uh, you know, just like debates in my head with somebody else. And one particular time actually was with cat care. Um, I'm not saying cat care was actually there. I just sort of envisioned like, you know, what would somebody do in my, in my turn? Like, what would cat care say? And since I watched cat care so much, um, I actually watch many, many prophets. I think the most that I watch is uh, Julie Green and Diana Larkin, um, maybe some Jojo Dawson. Uh, but uh, Cat Cat Care, I, I think, is the most formidable one. Uh, either her or Midnight Cry with Deborah, because they're the ones that I just want to go ah! <laughs> just strangle sometimes because of the things they have to say. Um, it, it's because they do bring conviction to the heart, and they they do bring um, this sense of like uh, you need to get it off you and focus more on the Lord sort of attitude. Um, and so in my mind, I was debating cat care. I was going through this call and response of, you know, pros, pros and cons of, okay, well, how do we do this? How, since you're the one who said eat cake, I'm going to envision you and we're going to have this little debate. And it was through that discussion where something came to me. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm having such trouble during this time in ways I can't celebrate oddly have nothing to do with me and i've been saying this over and over and over in my episodes it has to do with those i care about it has to do with my friends and my family those that i know are suffering those that i've lost contact with apart from my wife i mean we're still together but she's suffering as well too she's got her fibromyalgia and a bunch of other pains and stuff where she's hopped up on hopped up you know she's down with meds so much uh that she can't even get up till probably like you know 11 or noon or something she's just a shell of her former self and then there's other friends i have that I, I know for a fact are just they're in pain and suffering unimaginable right now and have been on their deathbed more than once and they keep trying to pursue they keep trying to just wrestle with life to keep going and I keep praying for them and I keep just, it's been nonstop. And I'm, I'm just like, I, I cannot be happy during this time. Okay. And to say I should almost sounds like an insult. Jesus didn't do a song and dance at Lazarus's tomb. He sat there and he wept with them. He sat and cried at Lazarus's passing. And this is, this is, directly before raising him from the dead he came there knowing he was going to raise him from the dead and he still wept with them he still cried when they were crying roger o'donnell from the cure explained it best when asked why do you look so serious playing keyboards all the time and he said well you just you can't laugh your way through songs like a hundred years you know it's it's true it's like there's there is a, a somber I don't want to say nihilistic, but but almost just a very there's there's a depth to certain things in life, where it's just like if there's pain and suffering, and you want the best for these people, you're not going to sit and smile and have a Pollyanna attitude and be like everything's great, just eat cake. You know, it's I I I had the I had the asses, I had to go through this in my mind. You know, like what? How can I do this when I know that they're literally as far as I'm concerned, almost on their last leg, like literally, like they're, they're just, they're days away from death, like at some points, how can I be happy on this? And I couldn't help, but as I got into the discussion with her in my mind, um, I, I was being brought back to a time in my life, I think it was around 2008, maybe 2007, 2008. I can't remember the date specifically because it was just, just a random day. I was just coming home from work, living in Madison, Wisconsin, and I, I was just, I was in tears. Um, it was late at night and the full moon was out and I was just looking at the moon. Just um, It's when I was having more of a turn to Christianity. Like, I think I, I really started to get into it in 2005 and do more in-depth studying then. I was always raised, you know, I was raised Catholic as, as a kid, but never, never got in-depth into Christianity. I never really picked up a Bible and started reading it uh, until like almost 20 years ago. Um, it was around 2008 where I was, I was really feeling down. I was just in tears and looking up at the moon and just asking the Lord, Lord, how, how can I love you more? How is it possible that I can love you more? And I got a lightning response voice back in my head almost instantaneously of him saying, 
if you want to love me more, love people more. And it does make sense because we're supposed to express ourselves to other people to show our, our love and generosity to show God through what we do to them so that they may in turn come to Christ. This is why I said previously in, in another episode that I, I don't really like street preachers too much. And it's not that I don't think they do a good job. I, I think that they are trying their best to bring people into Christ. But I, I think a lot of people, especially those who are totally um, against Christ, just normal street walkers and stuff, they were raised in that. And they were raised with biblical verses and they were raised with the beating over the head with the Bible and the whole, the Bible says, and you read it again to them more times than not. I think a lot of them aren't going to come to Christ because of that. A lot of them want down to earth discussion. They want apologetics. They, they want, they want a debate. They want a discussion. And then there are other people who not just want the discussion or want the understanding of God. They want to see the actions of what you do what you express, what, you know, live your life of Christ through yourself, have God live through you, have the Holy Spirit live through you so that they can see your actions and know that they want some of that as well, too. Whatever life you're living, whatever happiness and joy you have, you know, they would, they want that. And a lot of times I don't think it's, it's again, your joy and your happiness. It's the Lord's working through you. And therefore, showing love to God is showing love to everyone else because he's we're allowing him to work through us so that he can show his love to other people. And it did make sense to me, but it got to the point where now I was starting to live my life and do everything I can to show my love to certain people which I cared about, which I loved deeply, which I wanted in my life. And these past few years, God or Satan, I don't even know how to say it. God, I believe, allowed Satan, much like as in Job, where he allows Satan to tempt us to do these things to us, that we could become strong in the Lord, removed certain people from my life, removed certain things from my life and situations. And um, the biggest one was, was those that I cared about and those which I wanted in my life, those which I loved. And... I was having this debate in my head with Gak here and exp explaining all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, so I, I, I did try to do that. And, and I, I, I ended up having people who I loved and wanted in my life and cared about. And now God removed them. And almost again, that lightning response came back to me as back in 2008. It's almost like Gak here's voice was removed and God spoke to me in my own discussion that I was having in my head. And he's like, yes now you're starting to understand and it it hit me then in, in a very weird way kind of a like like a slow thinking harder and harder into it like going into the depths of what he was saying and pulling out what it was we are to if we want to love god we are to love other people yes that's true but now comes the time of choosing those which we love, which we want in our lives, those which we pray for constantly, those which we want to see do better in life, we need to now let go of them and focus on God more. This is where you need to return to your first love. It's like you can keep focusing on these guys and be in your sorrow and your pain and worry and grumbling and griping, or you can now turn back to me and lean into me and focus on me and give those worries and those problems and those pains which you have to me and let me work with them. And that was a struggle for me. It was a struggle to take everything that I thought that I was trying to do myself. And again, it would, maybe it was a prideful thing because, you know, it's not in our own strength, lest any man should boast. And God wants us to take the pain and the suffering and the sorrow that we have and the fear that we have and the anxiety and the depression and despair and give it to him and say, turn this into like a form of intercession. Do something with this. Turn it into good. And it's hard for me to give that up to the Lord because it, again, feels that if I do that, I'm somehow letting them down by not keeping the worry and the burden on me. And God doesn't want the burden on you. He wants to take the burden from you and turn it into something good. 
And that's why he's saying, if you love them now, turn to me and make me your first love and give it to me. Give your love of them to me so that I can do something with it. Give your pain and suffering to me and let me work in your life. Just as you've allowed me to work through your life for other people. Now I need you to do the same for those that you care about. And I think that was the biggest struggle for me. And this debate that I had in my mind, I think was maybe from a couple of weeks or a month ago where it, it happened. And um, yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been trying to do that more and more. And you know, trying to allow the Lord to come in, to take those things, to sweep it clean, to empty me out as well of that. So when he does come, when the glory does hit, when this kingdom age does happen and the glory fills us like it did in the days of Pentecost, when it fills the whole earth, um, he will be able to imbibe us, just fill us up completely with himself. And everything that we have given to him, he can restore it to its former self, if not exponentially better than what we had originally intended it to be. But we need to have faith in what he is doing. We need to allow him to do that. If we don't give him that, if we don't have the faith and trust in giving that to him, I think this ties in well with my episode three, the, the, the they will catch up one, where it's like, I see everything else happening. I see the prosperity happening. I see the tables flipping. I see the government going to, you know, having their uh, military tribunals. That's what it was, sorry. Um, those people getting arrested, some even losing their lives. Some of those who finally ha are turned coat and realize that they've done wrong coming to Christ. I, I see this this new era of of ways to live and ways of eating where the, the food and the air and the water and the soil isn't poisoned by this Luciferian elite where we're going to have joy perpetually. And one thing I can't see for the longest time was the return of those in my life. And the Lord was finally giving me that answer. He was saying, look, <laughs> look, you wanted to love me more. I told you to love other people and you've done that. And now that you do love other people and you're taking their strife and their worries and your pain that you have for them into yourself, you now need to give that to me. You need to return to your first love. You need to trust me and love me and agree with me and know that I'm going to do something for that. And you need to have faith in me on that. Lean into me, press into me during this time. And once you do that, once you allow me to take that from you, that fear will go. Because it was never a fear of what the enemy is going to do. As far as I'm concerned, they could send nukes and totally eviscerate me. I don't care either way. You know, it's, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm to the point in my life right now that so much has happened that if they blew up the world, I'd be like, whatever. You know, it's like, don't care. I'm trying to pray and declare and decree against that because I know God is trying to usher in what he wants to do with this kingdom age. And I want to be a part of that. I want to be a kingdom financier. I want to do what he is calling me to do. But if I didn't have that friendship in my life, then I don't care who I do it with because I don't want to be friends with anyone. It's like you've, you've given your heart and your soul and you've, you've strived so hard to keep the relationship going and the enemy has removed it from you. And all these prophets are saying, you know, well, the Lord is going to put the right people in your life. And it's like, so I can go through that again? I'd rather just not deal with it. I'd rather just you tell me as a, as a soldier to do something with these other soldiers within your army and we'll get it done. But my relationship value is at negative 5,000. Like if, if I can't see the return of those which I truly care for in my life, then I don't care about any other friendship in my life. It's just, I just, I'd rather not have it. I'll do without. I just, I, I don't want it. And I think the Lord is also helping me in saying, if you just give me the worry, if you give me the fears that you have, you can learn to celebrate more. You can learn to trust me more, to fix this, to bring back, you know, an exponential amounts with way more joy than originally anticipated what you wanted. Because his answers, if, you know, if within the Lord's plan is yes and amen, but we need to learn to give that to him. And the idea of do not fear celebrate is more of a give this to me 
know that I'm going to do this. Rejoice in what is coming to you before it happens, because then you will be way more blessed than you originally were, because you had faith in me. This is why we're supposed to eat cake. This is why we were supposed to eat cake from the beginning. And not just in the relationship value. I'm just giving you one example from my own personal experience, what is bogging me down. I'm sure a lot of you have your own experiences, like your own troubles, your own worries, which could be in line of the politics and everything that's going down today, or it could be more on a personal level. It could be relationship. It could be job. It could be family. It could be children. You know, your prodigal sons will return uh, and daughters. But the idea is, is that you, you give all of that to the Lord. You take your worry. Do not fear. Do not, do not worry or have anxiety for anything. Give it to the Lord and have faith and trust in him and celebrate willfully celebrate it is almost like a sacrifice i think this is what they mean by the sacrifice of joy <clears throat> to sacrifice joy to give it as an offering to the lord and being like we are going to worship during this time we are going to have faith in you during this time we're going to have joy and happiness during this time and if need be it needs to be the lord's joy it needs to be the lord's happiness and ask the lord lord please fill me with your joy give me your joy give me your happiness because i have none left I've given it to you with the pain and suffering that I have for these particular people. And until I see that return to my life, my own personal joy is not there. And I don't think it'll ever be there again. So you need to fill me with your joy and your happiness so I can overcome these trials and temptations and push harder and stronger and farther into what you are calling us to do as warriors and as soldiers and as the bride of Christ during this time to push back the enemy and usher in your new kingdom age. And I know this, this is a hard one for a lot of us. I know, and I know I'm not the only one. I've heard many prophets say the same thing. They have been, they have been stretched and pushed and crushed and pressed on a constant measure. And let me tell you one thing, and I'm not saying this as a way to belittle or mock you or threaten you or anything like that. But if you're going through life right now and you're a Christian and you're not having any pressing, you're not having any crushing right now, you're not having any pulling, you're not having any opposition in your life whatsoever where the devil is just beating you down on all sides, he does not see you as a threat. What are you doing for the kingdom of God right now? What are you doing to usher in this kingdom age? It's not even a sense of believing in the kingdom age. If you just believe in a thousand year reign, if you believe in the tribulation and the rapture and things that are going down, even that's a start. Maybe you just need more time. Maybe you just need more building up into realizing what is happening during this day and age. I get it. But the fact is, even the most just... I'm sorry to say it this way, but even the most village idiot of normal people today that have absolutely nothing to do with Christ is looking at the world and going, something is not right here. Something is dreadfully off, like massively off. And as a Christian, you should be feeling it way more than they are. You should know for a fact that within this, these past few years, something has changed. Something is just wrong. Like something is completely off. The world has flipped on its head. The masks are off with the enemy and they don't even care anymore. They're just blatantly saying it right on television, showing you, telling you exactly what they're doing. Isn't that a sign for you? Aren't you a, a, the least bit worried? I'm not saying again, do not, you know, do not fear, but it's like, it should bring up like warning signs, at least in, in the smallest sense it'd be like, you know, maybe something's going on here and we should be doing something about it. You need to be, you, you need to start praying into it. Ask the Lord, be like, Lord, what, what am I missing here? Like, Everything's great. I'm taking pictures of my food. I'm going on vacation a lot. You know, everything's great. It's like if everything's great right now and, and you're a Christian, devil's not bothered by you. He's, he's, he's not trying to beat you down in opposition to get you to quit. To quit what? To quit praying, to quit declaring, to quit decreeing, to quit intercessing, to get you so worn down and exhausted that you just want to give up and give in. If that's not happening to you right now, you're not doing something. Some of it, it's not because, you know, God's given you a joyous life. Again, I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just saying it as in, you know, the enemy doesn't care about you because it has nothing to worry about from you. 
if you are getting opposition within the last three years, if you are being crushed, if everything in your life has been removed and just eviscerated and everything, your health, your finances, your, uh, I don't want to say popularity, but for those of you who did have like a following and you lost that, it seems every single like uh, online site has been just tearing you down or removing you. Or, you, you know, if, if you were trying to get the truth out and, and you've been silenced, or if you had a, a job which you use to increase the kingdom right now by tithes and donations and offerings, and you lost it, and, you know, and it's just, it just seems to be getting worse and worse and worse and a crushing on all sides and waking up weary and just out of breath and worn out and just exhausted and tired. And it's just like, I've never been tired like this in my entire life. It's just every day is just exhaustion. Yeah, the enemy is trying to get you to quit. They're trying to beat you down. Give that to the Lord. Let him be your strength. Let him be your joy. Let him be your happiness. Let him build you up internally. Let him flow through you so that you can keep praying so that you have the strength. Ask him to give you your armor every day. Lord, please give me my armor so I could overcome the wiles of today because every day has been just mentally retarded. You, you, need, to, you need to just press into that. Press into him. Keep fighting against it. Do not be in fear. At the last thing that I'm in right now is fear. The only thing that I've just been in is just despair, watching those people I care about just constantly suffering. As far as I'm concerned, my life's doing great. The Lord has given me a new car within the last few years. He's been giving me a new job. Uh, I, I love my job. It's been awesome. You know, the, the pay is it's not exponential, but it's, it's, a, it's a decent living. Um, we're, we're well fed here. We're stocked up. We just bought a freezer within, I mean, ever since 2020, things have gotten worse, but my life has also gotten slightly better because of the things that the Lord has been building up for us during that time. And it's been great, but I know where my despair lies and the enemy knows where my despair lies. And he's been pressing hard into that and making sure that that does not come to fruition. And we need to keep giving that to the Lord, whatever your situation is, keep giving it to the Lord. Keep asking for it. Keep, keep pressing into him for that. Find the joy in Christ. Find the joy in what he's done for us and what he's going to do for us. And know in your head, not just there, but in your heart especially, that it's going to happen and that he will do it and it will come to pass. And we show that by celebrating, by laughing at the enemy and saying, you have no power over us. Everything you do will be turned to ash. And we will be living in exponential happiness and freedom and wealth and prosperity and friendship and love and under the glory of the Holy Spirit through the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ through the will of the Father. It will be his doing, not ours. We need to stop trying so hard to work into what it is that, that we want. Uh, I, I'm not saying give up entirely you know, if you're looking for a job keep applying for a job <laughs> but but let the lord give you discernment on where to look and the same thing with friendships you know don't keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing in, in into friendships i've i've <clears throat> tried to tone it down a bit and give them space because i know that they're in pain and i know that they're suffering and i don't know if my voice gives encouragement or if it just gives them more despair in, in the fact that they can't do anything about it as we wait for the Lord to finally move and usher in his plans at his perfect timing. So press into the Lord, let him do the work for you and let him fill you with his joy so that you do not fear anymore. And you again, do this through celebration. You, you do this through the eating of the cake to know that the joy is coming to celebrate before it comes. That is what true faith is. So I hope this has helped some of you. I know I could have gone more into this. We're over an hour and I'm sorry if I played too deep a role into the devil's advocate, but <clears throat> excuse me, but I didn't want to explain to you exactly where my feelings are, where I was at and that everything is not all, all roses, you know, peachy keen. We are going through a trial. There, there are tribulations, there are pains and suffering in life. And <clears throat> this last push of the enemy has been just exceedingly bad and it's gonna get exceedingly worse. Luckily only for a short time though. 
but we need to be aware and ready and prepared for what is coming and know that when it does happen, we are to rejoice even more because it is the Lord that's going to take that, their last ditch attempt, their last plan to think that they have everything in the bag, and he's going to flip it right on their head. So the darker it gets, the more happier we're supposed to be because we know that the end is near. And I hope that has helped some of you out. My book recommendation for today um, is The Forgotten God by Francis Chan. And I, I don't I don't have it here. I, I think I gave it to the in-laws as a gift. And so I'm going to um, just post it up below. You'll see it below. And you can follow the link to Amazon to get the book there if you want. And I do like his book um, <clears throat> mainly because even throughout my whole life, I've thought this is that we always speak of the Father and we always speak of Jesus, but we always speak um, to the Holy Spirit or about the Holy Spirit as not a distinct entity of the Godhead, as his own separate form, as his own separate nature, with his own his own feelings and his own um, personality. That he's more of just this air or vibe or vapor or uh, a thing, as opposed to an actual part of the Godhead. He is part of God. He is God. He is the Holy Spirit. And I think a lot of church today, a lot of people of faith, uh, do him a discredit because they, they just, he's, there's the Father and there's the Son, and then there's this thing over here, the Holy Spirit, that's kind of, uh, you know, and it's, I, I, I do like his book because it does, tend to bring home and bring back into relationship the Holy Spirit into our lives. And we need him just as much as we need the Father and the Son. And so I highly recommend his book. My prophet recommendation today, again, is Cat Care, because I have brought her up a lot. And I haven't uh, really tied her into anything yet. And I, I, I was almost going to call this episode Eat Cake when I originally did it. But I, I think that so many other prophets had also mentioned to uh, not to fear, but to celebrate. And Cat Care wasn't the only one. She was the first one that I watched. And so I almost kind of kind of wanted to make a joke on that and just call it Eat Cake. Um, but I'm going to reference this to all the prophets that have been pushing really hard into this and to not fear to celebrate. But I will give Cat Care the recommendation of today because she was the first. And I'm also going to tie in uh, not just her site, um, but I'm going to tie in an Elijah Stream site where they answered one of my questions. And it was probably a week or so after um, the 2020 election. And it ties in a lot to the thing that I was explaining today. How can we celebrate? How can we eat cake with all this pain and suffering in the world? And I'm going to time mark it for you where Cat Care gives her response. Now, it's not Elijah Stream's uh, official video clip. This is, I found this um, from someone else's site where he posted it up because I couldn't find it on Elijah's streams. I was scrolling down forever and ever and ever, and I, I couldn't remember the date or anything. So I just typed in random things like cat care, uh, celebrate. You know, I, I did specific days because you know I, I knew she came on Wednesdays, so I tied it down to those particular dates. And his video popped up, and he had the whole Elijah stream episode on where they actually answered the question that I wrote them, and she answers it. So I'm going to post that up. If you want to find the actual Elijah stream site, I, I recommend go to Rumble. And you could look at all their sites and listen to all of Cat Care's stuff. And if you really want to scroll through <laughs> for the past three years and find that one particular episode where you could exclusively watch it from their site, go for it. I'm not down, you know, trying to downplay Elijah's stream. You guys are awesome. I give to you on a monthly basis. Uh, but um, I, I just, I couldn't find your episode. So I just used someone else's copy of it. I hope you don't mind. <clears throat> and apart from that, I, I hope that has helped you somewhat in helping you come to the realization of of how we can overcome this uh, fear or our anxiety or our depression or our despair our worry or just our just long suffering into a particular person or a subject or a job or just anything in life that we are going through struggles with and heavenly father thank you again for this time um i hope that i have spoken correctly and true to your word on how to look at this situation, how to overcome this situation. Um, <clears throat> this is a very uh, tough subject, I think, for a lot of us, a lot of us that are suffering right now. And every day we're getting up and we're just like more pain and more suffering, even though we gave it to you yesterday. 
and we understand that this is a daily process every day we need to have our daily bread we need to get into your word every day we need to speak to you every day we need to get into our closets every day we need to talk to you and lean into you every day and if it means that the next day we get up and we're in suffering and we're in pain because of the person or the situation that we care about we give it to you again and then we give it to you again the next day and the next day and we keep doing that constantly until we are slowly being emptied out by all that pain and suffering and filled with your joy and not to be in fear but to celebrate for what you're supposed to be doing uh, and are going to do sorry during this last season harvest and the turnaround happens and it'll be ex just well beyond anything that we could have possibly imagined and we thank you for that and we give you all the glory and praise in jesus name we pray amen there it is folks um kind of a weird one today i just sort of went off on a rant i didn't have too many things to dive into other than just my own troubles and how to overcome it and that was the answer that the Lord gave me. He may give you different answers on how to overcome it in your own personal way or the way that he wants you to do it. But I think the main thing is, <clears throat> is that we can't constantly live in this perpetual worry, whatever the situation is in our life. We need to give it to the Lord and we need to be like, Lord, through your strength, through your joy, through your happiness, please give us your glory. Give us, give us everything you have because we are just, we're emptied out and exhausted and worn out and just... We can't keep doing it in our own strength anymore because we're just completely crushed. So it needs to be through you. And that is where we will find true joy, true happiness, and a reason to celebrate. So I will catch you next week. Uh, next week's episode, uh, the last two episodes. Well, I <clears throat> shouldn't say that. It was going to be the last two episodes. The next one is going to be how do we overcome this lying government and big tech and this little collage that they have together of just uh the enemy just lying blatantly to everyone and trying to pass all these laws into public and just ruin our economy ruin our nation ruin everywhere around the world and episode 19 about how to overcome the religious spirit um, that of jezebel during this time and maybe i'll do one more episode after that which would end up being pretty much right before new year's eve or the 30th, maybe 30th or 31st, uh, I'll post one up, which should end the year and this series pretty good. Um, if there is any more that I do after that, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but I, I kind of wanted to make it just like a, you know, roughly a 20 episode series with some of the small tidbit clips and some side notes and stuff like that. One of these days, I'll still try to get to that 11, 11. So <laughs> maybe I'll do that around new year's for you. So that is it. I will talk to you later. I'll see you next week, next episode. Oh, and uh, before I forget, I apologize. Um, I told you in my tidbits segment that I was that we skipped last week's episode, and it's going to be for this week because Thanksgiving threw me off. I totally forgot it was Saturday, so I didn't have a clip ready or anything. So I just made a short one saying we'll just move it to next week, and that this week I was supposed to have my anniversary. Not true. My anniversary is actually next week because we got married on the 10th. So we're going to be celebrating on the 8th and it'll give me time to make a new video then. I got so enthralled with uh, going to Schnitzel Garden, that's our favorite German restaurant here in Boise, that uh, I moved it up a week <laughs> thinking that we were going to be going to it then. No, I got to wait yet another week to celebrate. So next week will be our anniversary. Uh, and I guess that's it. I will talk to you all later. God bless. Take care. Love you and stay strong in the Lord.